everyone. I thought I'd come back and do a debrief. I've been processing what went down tonight. And, uh, wow. Wow. I'll give a couple of minutes for people to come in and get notifications that I'm live again. Um, Amanda has posted um, Justine Elliott's speech for commending the bill to the house on the page now, which is really good. Thank you very much to Justine Elliott. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I've had something to eat. I've taken something to settle my stomach because each one of us has a different way of processing things. And um, as you saw in the other video at the tail end, Amanda was very upset, right? Um, I didn't hear how the Greens spoke on it earlier because I... I um, because we, we cut off because we had to, do you know what I mean? Um, just could not listen to any more LMP absolute lies. Absolute lies. Sickening. All right, so um, for me, um, I tend to go very quiet about things. Like I tend to just shut down and, and not feel anything. And then as I process things, I tend to stew and then I get angrier and angry as I process them. Do you know what I mean? And I'm angry. I am more than angry. I'm livid. Because all I heard in those speeches from the LMP was disgusting. And like Amanda, I'm triggered. I am a survivor of a very brutal attack. Um, and the guy was drunk. <laughs> and But no cashless debit card in the world would ever have stopped him from being the pedophile that he was. Or doing what he did. And I wasn't his first victim. He would never have stopped him from being drunk. Because it doesn't stop people from accessing alcohol. Right? But it can't stop anybody from being a pedophile. And the insinuation that us as parents, right, we're all pedophiles. Makes me sick. Absolutely makes me sick. Right? That we're all drunks and we're all addicts and we all can't manage our finances. But they went off track. They've gone so far down the rabbit hole that they lost even their own reasoning for why the card was bought in. Remember, it was about drugs, alcohol and gambling. And then it was about financial, um, you know, it was a financial tool, right? Somebody's saying you can't hear me. You might have to refresh. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Right. The thing is, how dare they paint in, in communities? They're doing it again. They're doing what they did with the NT intervention. They are painting every Aboriginal man as a pedophile. They are painting every Aboriginal person as a drunk or an addict. Right. And, but overall, because we know, and they've let it slip tonight, they did want to expand it and roll it out across the country. So basically, anybody receiving any form of Social Security payment is now being called a pedophile and a drunk. Right? They're using marketing strategy to do this. Right? And crying, what about the children? What about the children? And I had this argument earlier in the week with somebody. What about the human rights of a child? I said, don't you call bloody rights of the child on me? Because what about the rights of the children of the parents that have been forced onto this cash debit card that have gone through the last, depending on what area they're in, six years, four years, three years of this card, right, and missed out on being part of their community and their society and not understood why. You know what I mean? But the thing that I'm seething about... I am not a pedophile, yet they would have put me on the cash debit card because I receive a disability support pension. And not one person that I've met that's on the cash debit card is a pedophile, but they're making it out as though we all are. All right? It's disgusting. I am absolutely disgusted with their language and the way they're carrying on. They did this to push the Northern Territory intervention in, right? They used fake you know, Marlborough's staffer is a social worker, claimed he lived in a town that he didn't even live in and he wasn't a social worker. I am furious, right? And I think people need to let them know. Let them know that we are not. 
And not every Aboriginal person is either. Right? This constant trying to paint people on Social Security in, in such a bad way. To, to fulfill an ideological political agenda of privatization and money for shareholders and, and mates. They don't care about the kids. They don't care about the damage the card's done. It's about their money. All right? Not one of them in that chamber tonight could speak for themselves. They were following a script. Right down to one of them was using the ARIMA report again, even though that's been dismissed debunked and corrected right but still clinging on to that dodgy report and they're picked up bloody figures now they're distorting the figures from the Adelaide University evaluation which they they set in motion they did it and they chose to ex exclude Hinkler electorate as Keith Pitt says the biggest patch on the card with 6,000 odd people on the card right i am so i had to cut that short tonight i couldn't get through anymore i saw a snippet of rebecca sharkey she showed her true colors rebecca sharkey came out finally and admitted that she wanted it rolled out across the country as well but she's been dicking us around for the last two terms that she's been in Oh, I'm not, I'm against the card, but I need to see the evaluation. We're not going to make a decision until we see the evaluation. We saw what happened last time. Sterling Griff was her man in the Senate. And look what he did. Look what he did. And we warned people. So if you were out when they were campaigning in Mayo, let us know if she was saying that she didn't support the cashless debit card, will you? Because tonight she let slip. She's, she wanted to push it out just as well. All right? You know, this is disgusting, what I heard tonight. It is sickening and um, it's not fair to do it again, to use the same lies, the same tropes, the same language and, and just try and... You know, do you know, I spoke to a law, e law elder, a real on-country law elder. He lost his nef niece, he lost his 14-year-old niece because of this damn card. And he told me, 30, 30 kids assaulted sexually assaulted by 32 uh, 32 people i think it was he said all right 30 of them were white cashed up miners two of them were aboriginal men two aboriginal men went to jail and when they came out they faced they faced cultural law right what happened to the other 30 white blokes nothing Nothing. Because the Aboriginal kids were too scared to come forward. <coughs> when they rolled the cash just debit card into Seduna, for a while there we got to watch, courtesy of Dee Pavey being able to put up the post in regarding the um, the crime, the monthly crime st st um, stats, prostitution rose why is that because people need cash to survive in regional towns <coughs> that's why and people have been taking advantage of people in that situation and we saw that again with uh, um kananara every region that the card went into it was like putting a red light on on the top of the town hall in you come, you know, the rise in domestic violence, the rise in petty crime, crimes of opportunity, minor fraud, prostitution, <coughs> people exploiting people, you know, 
Oh, fill up my tank for 150 bucks. I'll give you $100 cash. People effectively stealing other people's social security by doing that. I reminded people in the Hinkler region when it was being talked about being rolled out here and it was being discussed on the community pages. People said, oh, I'll just offer somebody to go in and do my shopping for me on the card and I'll give them less cash when they come out. They didn't like it when I threw it back at them. So you're willing to stoop so low that you'll steal somebody else's social security payment instead of help them out by giving the, the equivalent in cash correctly you're going to rip them off you're going to be a thief all right all the way through the last seven years i have seen people being exploited taken advantage of ripped off stolen from stolen from by indu money missing in the accounts and nobody ever accountable about it always blaming the card holder suggesting they did something wrong even when indu has been hacked that many bloody times by overseas gaming and porno groups right but no even to go as far as i had one couple have a hundred dollars out of each of their accounts removed by pornhub uk and when they tried to report it the wife was told, or maybe your husband's doing it behind your back. You know, it was disgusting. It was disgusting. Those people never got that money back. And then there's people in the WA, 200 $250 a time, missing, didn't go back, didn't get it back. And the people in Seduna, $60, $70, $80 a fortnight, missing from their accounts, didn't get it back. 890,000 declines on the card. How many times have people walked in to a supermarket in Seduna and the cards failed? In a sec, Amanda. I'm furious. That I knew that the Liberal Party wouldn't just wither away. They weren't going to walk away graciously and say, well, we've lost. But to come out tonight and be the disgusting lowest pieces of shit I've ever seen in my life, right? And, and Keith Pitt has the audacity to activists who don't even live in the area. I wonder why, Keith. wonder why. Because you, 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 we all fled. We had to flee to save our children, right? Those of us that could flee to save our children did. I don't like where I'm living, I'm isolated, I'm stranded where I am and I'm four hours away from my daughter, I can't do anything to help her if I wanted to. Thank you, Keith Pitt. Thank you, Keith Pitt. You know what I mean? You have broken up and destroyed families. You have caused so much financial hardship within families. You've caused so much stress, so much bankruptcy, so much loss of hope. But you don't care. Because in your tiny little pea brain, talking to your high school mistress, you say it's working. Funny enough, I spoke to somebody else who also worked at a Bundaberg High School and she knew it wasn't working. And she'd seen the other side of the coin that you never mentioned. And you ran Breakfast Club into the ground as if it's a bad thing. And now people won't use, oh, oh Breakfast Club's down here yeah, because you shamed everybody into something that has been going for years and years and years around the country in different states because it's a socially inclusive program. It's not about fucking breakfast. But you made it a political thing, didn't you? But you couldn't get your lies right. 100 hungry children. Then it was a 1,000 hungry children. See, I can only speak in regards to Keith Pitt in the Hinkler region because I was living in the Hinkler region, right? That's where we started the campaign on the ground protesting when this happened. And, and my admins and the people that were protesting with me, every one of them went on a card, including a, a young guy who was a law student. They didn't care. And Jody, who was who's working part time. But when a current affair interviewed her, they omitted that little bit. Jody's since gone on to have Broken heart syndrome as a result. Permanent heart damage due to the stress caused of being forced onto that card. And the way that she was treated throughout her opt-out applications, multiple attempts to get off of it. And it damn near killed her. 
you know, how scary would it be? You're 32 years of age, you're home alone, and you drop in the shower, and there's no one to help you. And you got and you live in a house you're sharing with men, but they're not home. And you're cold and you're wet and you've dropped in the shower and you've got to drag yourself to your bedroom to get some clothing on, ring an ambulance and wait. Keith Pitt, he'd never apologise to Jodie for that. Yeah. Karen is not living in another area, Keith. She lives right in your back door. She's in Bundaberg with you, mate. But you dismiss her and her children too. See, this is it. Keith Pitt dismisses everybody and they've all done the same damn thing. The member for Grey doesn't even have an office in Sedona. Right? Rowan Ramby. Oh, this was the first time I'd actually spent, seen Wilson from Kalgoorlie speak tonight. Got to follow the script. Sickening. I've been hearing what's been going on in Kalgoorlie from people on the card, on the ground, in town. They don't feel safe to walk down the street. But no, the LMP's got to lie. But it's the lie that they're doing. It's just, oh, it's just disgusting. Disgusting. Everybody get on the phone tomorrow to these LMP and tell them. Tell them what you think. How dare that they brand your children coming out of high school. They wanted to put them on the cash as debit card as soon as they went on to youth allowance. They branded your children pedophiles and drunks. And your mums and your dads and your aunties and your uncles. And even worse, if you're Aboriginal. Don't take this shit line down. You bloody raise your voices, people. Right? People on social security have had enough of being vilified and misrepresented, bullied, harassed, and had this picture painted of, th we're not. So I fully encourage everybody tomorrow, give those LMP and those pro-card supporting members, the member for Mayo, and Jackie as well, let them have it. Don't be rude, don't swear at them, but you let them know that your parents, your grandparents, and your kids are not pedophiles, and not drunks. Right? Because I'm over this. I'm over this. This has been going on now. When you take into consideration the Northern Territory intervention and the basis card, 15 fucking years of this bullshit, I'm sorry, and six and a half, seven years of the cashless debit card, right? And they're using the same language again. No. Nope. You're not going to get away with the same lies all over again. And warning to the members of the Senate down there, right, if we hear the same crap on the 5th of September, oh, my God. Because it shows that they have no consideration for the real victims of sexual assault anywhere in the country when they start speaking like that. And they think it's okay because they're all covered under parliamentary privilege so they can bullshit and tinker tinker with the bloody figures and say whatever they want because it's all pro protected under parliamentary privilege. I challenge one of them to come and say it to me in my face outside of parliament and let me record it, video it. Slandering whole groups of people, whole communities, whole towns. Based on what? All right? We thought privatisation of Social Security was bad enough, but this is even worse. They've gone too far. Okay, I'm going to let Amanda in now. I've taken Panadol and everything, and I just need to be able to bear the steam, because I'm still stewing. So it's not good enough. It is not good enough, and I'm not going to sit down and shut up about it. Hello. Hi, hi dear, how you doing? Good, um, I'm going to smoke stuff the whole lot of them. <laughs> no, so I think you just, you just put it all in a nutshell and very well. And thank you for doing that and thank you for defending survivors. And I would like somebody who knows to please clip this live feed and send it to Tame Punk, to Grace Tame.
for me and on behalf of all survivors everywhere, please. Um, I've been really struggling since the last live. Um, like, you know how with PTSD, your head says something and you know it's not true. Yep. But, you know, my head's taken their words, you know, that we're going to, we're going to cause children to be harmed by pedophiles and all this stuff. And it's really hard for me to get that out of my head right now. Really? I've had my, all I've, heard, I've had my meds and calm heard. down, but it's just, it's just all like. What's going around in my head is you're on social security, you're a pedophile. Well, this you're is it. Report, it's like you're a pedophile. Been the you're chat drunk, before. right? Yeah. No, and I'm, and I'm not going to stand for that. Right, and I'm not going to stand for any of us being vilified you, in that way. None of us, right? We're Australian citizens and we need a goddamn lot more better respect well, than that. You, you picked the right word, you picked the right, it is vilification. What they are doing now is vilification of the worst possible kind. Um, you know, to be, I think that I said in the chat earlier that what people can do now is send us in pictures or send us in a piece of paper covering their face if they want and just write not a pedo and your payment. Okay, what your payment is. Yeah. Just write DSP, I'm not a pedo. Okay, and um, put that and send it to us. We've done that before and it, and it does make an impact. So if you want to help right now, um, I think that would be a good thing to do. You know, I'm not a drunk, not a pedo, not a child abuser, not a wife abuser. Whatever you, you know, whatever hit you hardest tonight, you know, transform it in. You know, we we are a legendary for turning shit into rose beds, guys. That's what we do. Well, That's what we've always done. Tonight, <laughs> they defined 6.6 .6 million Australians. Well, yeah, there's 6.6 .6 million. Slanderous accusations that are unfounded. Yeah, simple as that. They've based, you know, this card was going national. Okay, there was no way that this program wasn't, and we had people in Inju saying it was ready to go. We had people all around the country who uh, we had the AO, the NLP before the 2020 bill had even been approved. Matt Canavan was on Sky News saying it's time to roll it out across the country, and you can see that in our. In my page, I've actually got the clip of him saying that from Sky News. Well, you can Google it yourself. <clears throat> Just those words, Canavan, cashless debit card, time to take it national, in a Google search will show you. They were preparing for a national rollout, and that means everyone on Centrelink, and we know from the forest review and from the reviews done of the forest review that it wasn't just all payments that Andrew Forrest wanted on the cards. It was 100% of welfare yeah. payments, sorry, Centrelink payments on the card, you know, and it was also NIDS funding. He wanted to put the NIDS funding through providers on the card as well. So, you know, it's like, there's some, you know, the, the thing that hasn't been talked about tonight, which I think needs to be talked about, you know, because of my, I've, I've, got, I've had some pretty extensive trauma, guys. So I have a psychiatric disability as well as a physical disability. But the, the impact of this card on people with disabilities isn't being discussed. Um, the right. fact that income management um, itself under basics was actually supporting families who have a child or a parent with disabilities to um, manage their income rather than going to the public trustee, which we all know is a shit tank of hell. Um, so income management in that sense was working for some, but for people like me living with disabilities, people in chairs who can't get, who need taxis, who couldn't get taxis. And, um, yeah, there was a lot of other issues regarding disability rights. It hasn't even been discussed. It's like we don't exist. No, and it's it. like carers of the world don't exist. We just simply don't exist. They are just, the NLP are just making things up as they go along now. And, and the reason what, why it didn't exist, exceptionally bad. The reason why it didn't exist, Amanda, is when I rang the anti-discrimination board like three or four years ago about the vilification and with people, it, they couldn't do anything because there was nothing in the legislation to stop the vilification. They've got nothing in there. This is what needs to change. After and this is all over completely, 
we need to focus on getting vilification of, of people on government payments put into the Act. Um, just yep. as they're doing now with uh, LGBTQI communities, they need to do the same thing for Centrelink recipients yep. because the vilification here is incredible. And these words will go out now to all their base. They are just playing for their redneck base. Yep. And um, these words will now be on Hansard records and used to try and undermine the, um, they're trying to yeah. trap ALP into a thing like if one person gets drunk and smashes his car in the next three years, they're going to blame Labor for it. And while there, is a, responsibility, yeah, while there is a responsibility for everyone in card regions to, to do the right thing, the reality is Labor's not your mummy and your daddy. If you've got That's a problem not. with alcohol, fucking, you know, go to an AA meeting, it's free. You know, if you've got a problem with drugs, go to an NA meeting, okay, and people there can help you. I know because I'm 27 years clean and sober, okay, and that's how I started. You can work out rehab and all the other shit later, but you can go and get help right now. You do not need to keep suffering if you are suffering, you know. So, but it's, you know, the reality is there is more crime and more drugs now because of the card. Removing the card removes the impotence for criminals from other regions to come into trial regions to abuse uh, powerless people. And that's what they, that's what's happened powerless people are being abused by criminals yep. that are doing the score. So, and that was proven when they did that big, huge drug bust on country, all ice and method, first ever, oh. first ever massive. And that's because that's what's happened. People have swapped so out for ice. That was know? a shipment going into Seduna, $60 million. Layla, no, it doesn't, darling. Layla, no, the card, no, no, no. We've got the numbers in the house. So despite all this deplorableness, this bill will pass the House and it will go to Senate. And, okay. and Keith Gitt was going on about drug addicts and, and drug dealers, right? Did he forget of the guy that uh, racked up $102,000 on the injury card that was yeah, dealing with drugs? Like the injury card really helped that, not. <laughs> you know what I mean? It didn't stop him from... What a dirt, though, to put it on a government card. Come on. How I dumb mean, do you yeah. have to be? And that tells me that the guy wasn't a career criminal. But he lost no, his job. He got lost his job. Yeah, and he was right. trying to make and, a quick quit. And, and, and I'm not. Look, he's gone to jail for seven years, right? And but at the end right. of the day, so he committed a crime. And that's what he's going to do. The crime, right? You treat criminal but, through criminal law, and child you know, sexual abuse is a crime that has to be treated as a crime. And a yeah. welfare card's not going to stop either. It's not going to stop people committing crimes. It never yeah. has and it never will. Prohibition has never worked in human history. Where they they get this money, idea? Hello, from Egypt. <laughs> Where is this idea that a pedophile will stop being a pedophile when you put a cashless debit card in his hand? And not just oh, that, you actually empower pedophiles with this card because it gives them, they wave the $20 note in front of a young child oh. and child doesn't, mummy knows mummy's oh. on the card and doesn't have cash. You know, um, you know, this is what happened on country. This is what happened in other locations. It's happened in Hinkler, where abusers have been able to take advantage of powerless children because of their fact that their parents are on income management and have no cash. So I'm not saying cash is the saviour of, of children, but I am saying that it's easier now for pedophiles to abuse. And look, what we said before, the, the Office of the Prime Minister and Cabinet staffer that got done, exactly word for word, what Andrew Forrest described um, about Roeburn was actually happening, but it was, it was white members of the staff of Parliament that were doing yeah. it. How else would he have known? See, this is what upset me was Twiggy knew that that staffer yeah. had been done and what the staffer was doing and didn't report it to authorities. So he knew what was going on and he knew who was doing it. Look, there is some horrendous things happening with alcohol violence in Australia and it requires a national effort, but the Inju card won't help it. And I can tell you from experience as a former addict alcoholic that it would have driven me to my abusers because they were the only ones that would accept me for who I am. And that's the key to overcoming addiction is finding new groups of people who accept you for who you are. And this card only segregates you from those people. I know, <laughs> I would have gone straight to, you know, I would have gone, it would, I would have been even more open to abuse. So, 
you know, um, this is backwards. And when they did the drug trial bill, you heard the psychiatrist going, no, you heard the drug and alcohol specialist going, don't do this. You will make the problem worse. And yeah. it's, um, you put people into hiding instead of coming forward to services when they need it, people go into hiding out of shame and stigma. And because uh -huh. <laughs> In the last seven years, the NLP haven't put in any new services anyway. All they've done is fund the JSAs. That's all they've done. And they've given cars, fancy cars, to the, to the few services that they've cherry-picked. Brand new computer showroom office for centre care. You know, while centre care, you know, has been useful for some people, they've also been incredibly horrendously abusive to others. So um, they lock their doors at three o'clock because the Aboriginals might come. You know, they yeah. give out food Racist. parcels a week, whereas the church down the road that gets no funding is giving out a thousand food parcels a week. But because the centre care is on the CRG and the church down the road isn't, mm -hmm. you know, the real facts about, you know, deprivation and food, food scarcity aren't being registered in their documents because it's all the NLP people that are being paid to talk that are getting the money. One of those, one of those guys on a, carried on about how people... Um, could buy shoes. He forgot about Seduna and they couldn't buy shoes. And then well, the I shoe shop closed up anyway. And then, you know, and then we threw it for, through this page, right? A charity from Melbourne jumps in and buys 300 pairs of shoes for the kids in Seduna, right? Um, but look what it did to the person who bought that to the light. Yeah, you the remember? person that bought, bought to light ended up having, you know, um, a, a, an incredible good. amount of pain. We can't really talk about it because it's a subject of legal proceedings. There you go. That's how good that was. Yeah. So no good deed goes unpunished, you know. And um, needless to say, we've had to spirit two women out of Seduna who were badly abused and had their income managed status used against them. Okay, so it's like this is given power to domestic abusers, domestic family violence, you know, perpetrators. It's uh, you know, um, meanwhile the mine, the mines are supporting and and throwing money at men doing the abusing. You know, at least now in Kalgoorlie there is a female judge who's not letting the other male judge run roughshod over her, right. and they, you know, so hopefully she can start giving some justice for people in Kalgoorlie because the male judge was just condemning women. One woman was, it was an attempted murder on her life. And we talked about her here on page. And um, Anne Ruston wouldn't even talk to Jacinda Ahern about it. We went, we went to the New Zealand um, Foreign Office to try and get some justice for this woman. And, um, and Jacinda actually grabbed the phone and, and Anne wouldn't talk to her. Uh, Anne Ruston wouldn't talk to her. So it's like, that's how that's how myopic they were about keeping this card. But this isn't just about the money, remember? This, keeping this going isn't about the money. It's about the control over our government That's that privatising this portfolio would give the corporations that all these Liberal members belong to. All these Liberal members have shares in all these really big companies that will make a mint yep. out of this. This is $280 billion a year going from Australia into the world, world financial markets, okay? Yep that all the social security payment spending plus the rest of the welfare and social welfare spending as well, all being offshore. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this is about giving corporate control over our government and we, we've got to stop it. It's just, it has to stop. Yeah. And, and people laughed at me when I said they're effectively selling us, us. We become shares commodified, human shares commodified and traded on the stock market. And, you know, we know that from the Bank of China inclusion, how this money moves around the world. We know. That's new, that's new that is. But, yeah, we saw the receipts well, for that. The California Bank, there's a whole heap of banks that, you know, that do this. And look, you know, Westpac Bank here in Australia are in due corporate partners and they've just been done for giving money to child traffickers. Where's their in due card, eh? <laughs> Where's it? They actually have been done for do, for actually materially supporting abusers in in, pedof in in the Philippines, you know, to do live streams of abuse, and they've they've been paying for that. Westpac just got done for doing giving them money. So where's their injury card? If if the injury card solves pedophilia, where's Westpac's injury card? Yeah, absolutely. Well, when Bobby Joyce was chasing young women into toilets in Tamworth, he's obviously a sex pest. Where's his in due card? He can't stand up straight in Parliament question time half the time. Where's his in due card? 
You know, if it says, if it does everything they says it to, then 90% of the men in this country, I can tell you, would be on it. You know, it's, um, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And tonight was an, a, a complete farce. You know, but if everyone out there on a Centrelink payment who was offended by this tonight can send us in a picture, which, you know, of either yourself or a sheet of paper saying, my payment, I'm not a pedophile. I'm not a child abuser. I'm not a drunk. I don't use drugs. And we can flood them with those pictures over the next 24 to 48 hours. That would be great. Yep. But you'd need to mobilise today, tonight, yeah, to do you that. You need to, to mobilise pretty quick, guys. All right, stand up for yourselves and, and do this pretty quick. Yeah, the only bank in Australia, just the only bank in Australia that doesn't support INJU and the cashless debit card is Bank Australia. And after we made that clear on our pages about two, two years ago, because the bank executive um, actually tweeted to my pace, he said, we don't agree with it, we don't support it, we don't use INJU, like he was very fast to do that. They got swamped and overwhelmed with new people. <laughs> And um, even now they've got a waiting list for some services because um, so many people joined up realising that they were an independent and um, were standing up for social justice, which I think is fantastic. And it was really good of him to actually come to my tweet, Twitter feed and to say that because everyone just switched. <laughs> it was good. It was good. It was, it was one of the few highlights. Bank Australia, that's the one. They don't support Inju Limited. They don't use their service. Every other bank in Australia does, including Bendigo, unfortunately. Um, Amanda Richworth is good. Yes, she's going to have to get very savvy with the data and before Senate. They're going to be able to have to slam back. Yeah, they're going, and they're going to have to, have to make sure they have, You know, they're going to have to go through and, um, you know, and examine the Adelaide Unary report and actually get those DV figures and explain to the Senate that the crime's gone up, that the DV's gone up, you know, so, you know, as a result of the program, you know, as a direct result of the program. People's you know, talking, NLP talking about lives lost before the card don't seem to have included lives lost because of it, you know. No, that's the point of not the including those people. of lives, you know. They want it. They want everyone to focus on it being an Aboriginal program and while we absolutely respect it's a racist card, that disproportionately, you know, disproportionately harms and impacts Aboriginal people via the population numbers. They want to keep it focused on that because they don't want people knowing 60% of the people on it are white, you know, and they wouldn't ask them to speak in the evaluation because they knew that white people are going to stand up a little bit differently to, to you know, the Aboriginal people that be, can be controlled by the likes of Ian Trust. Everyone goes, oh, he's such a trusted person. Well, you know what? I haven't heard a person from Kununurra say that. The only one saying that has been the Liberal Party. Because every person I speak to that's been forced on a card who isn't homeless is saying that it's not true. So, you know, all these stakeholders and very wealthy white and very wealthy black, you know, people are having the say, but the voices of the card holders aren't being heard. Again, Amanda, you know? can I just interrupt you? Do yeah, I'm going to. Do you Sorry, know yeah. who is the housing minister for? Uh, no, hang on, hang on a second. Um, who who's the health minister for the Labor government? Oh, I can't remember. No, I'm sorry, I don't write off my head. I'm sitting out having a cup of coffee under my heater, <laughs> trying to calm down and, you know, oh, well, just all the... Justine's I... office and I can ask her. Okay, that's all right. I'm, I'm still not helping. worried about you, Julie. The, um, the Australian Greens have already put out a statement saying they support the ALP bill. So I'm not worried about their vote. Um, Mark Butler, there you go, Dale. Thank oh, you very thank much. You. And thank um, you. you know, the Greens vote, um, Janet Rice, while they were underwhelming during the election about campaigning on the card, they have stuck to their promise regarding um, supporting the bill. And they are. The last clip I have from Janice was Janet Hunt, uh, Janet from the Greens. Is it Janet? Yes, it is. Um, was that the, the Greens welcomed the bill to end the card. Janet so, Rice, Janet yeah, Rice. so I'm not worried about that. Okay, Mark Butler is the health minister. Yeah, I've just put that on there. Yeah, look, I don't like Adam Brandt and there's no, there's no holding that back because I've actually said quite openly I don't like him. 
but you know I do support the Greens in the fact in a lot of areas but I just don't support him I prefer to work with Janet who is at least approachable um, but like you know um, I was really happy to work with Rachel and her staff oh, and I really yeah. miss her right now yeah, I miss absolutely. her five brand right now I can tell you and it's um Yes, Anne Rustin is the Shadow Minister for Health. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. um, but look, you know, every party will have people. There's people in the ALP I don't like, you know, so it's like, you know, but I was really pleased to see that the two uh, most right wing members of the ALP actually left at the last election. So that was really good. Then they left before they were already, you know, their terms were up and they weren't, they weren't going to stand. So some of the people that I don't like in Labor have actually left, which I'm happy about. And there's, you know, but I said, as I said to people and to Catherine, I don't vote for parties, I vote for people. You know, and if I like the person and they resonate with me, then I'll vote for that person. And that's irregardless of what party they're from. But this last election, it was imperative that we vote for party, not just people. And yeah. um, and I'm glad that enough people did to give the ALP the majority. Can you imagine where we'd be right now if we didn't have a majority in the Senate, in the oh, House? Oh. <laughs> I, would be cracking, I would be cracking it if we didn't have that majority. I was so relieved. I wasn't relieved at all in the election until we got that, until ALP got that um, majority. Because I knew that the blocking is going to happen in the Senate. So, but it's great to have a oh, progressive be... House, but we needed a progressive Senate as well, and we didn't get that. We got three completely right wing nut jobs elected to Senate. So, people have to be aware that they have to think about their voting strategy. And yeah. they don't understand how to. They see this oh, group really <laughs> with all these names, and they don't have a clue who's who. And that's where it goes wrong. People don't understand how important the Senate is and what it actually does. Yeah. And this is where we need better education um, around about voting and voting for Senate members. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. everybody gets distracted by, like, the main House of Reps electives. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. The, the party, and they don't realise what is needed in the Senate. And it's like... Yeah. Look, uh, Julie, I think that Rachel would be cheering that the bill's gone through, yeah, but I also think she'd think like me, that a bit angry that people, uh, anyone is going back onto, um, onto basics at all. Um, and she would have wanted, like me, more provisions to end basic starts starting to be discussed already. So I know she'd be cheering that this bill is going through, but it's like um, she'd be really aware that, you know, income management under basics cards has had the same impact for Aboriginal communities for 15 years and yep. it's time now. But she also is aware of the instruments that didn't come up until October and she's aware of ALP, you know, she, she'd be very aware of the issues, more, more informed oh. than us in a lot of ways and um, in all the ways. <laughs> and it's like, you know, and I... But I can I can see her cheering for the bill, but going, come on, do more. <laughs> and then you know what? And I can hear it in my head. Raise the bloody rate. <laughs> yes. I can Absolutely. hear it in my head. Raise the rate. Raise get the people rate. out of poverty. And let's get this economy booming because as soon lift as you lift people, people out, out of poverty, it's gonna be amazing. Lift so people um, out of poverty. First steps first, yeah. We get this card done, we get it out, we get basics cards voluntary. You know, and throughout this process, we keep pressuring for rate rise for the job seeker, especially. And I say that even being on DSP and age pension are pretty much the same amount. We need to triage with the budget as it is. And I say we focus on getting jobs, job seeker up to a livable payment equivalent. Get rid of, to youth, allowance. Get rid of youth allowance. Give the kids the same yeah. amount of money when they're turning. Same amount of money. Everyone on, on the same That's payment true. rate. Because uh, and other kids have got to pay rent on a room. They've just got to pay electricity, food, transport, right? Just do the same bloody payment, but lift it up. It's got to go up by 80 bucks a day minimum because otherwise the CPI is going to increase so much, right, with inflation. Yeah. We're going, to be, we're going to be screaming for there's going to be this lifted $100 a day to make any impact. Do you know what I mean? And the well, thing is, moment, the biggest problem with inflation is corporate profit. The argument that if you give 
poor people more money is going to drive inflation up is a load of bullshit because it's the corporations and the billionaires that yeah. have driven this inflation up, not the poor people who can't spend, right? Yeah. You need to be able to spend, right? And they can't spend, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, anyway. But it's yes, true. Okay. It's like the corporation. And what does NGU card do? The NGU card forces people to end up in conglomerations like Woolworths and Coles and all the corporations and the big stuff. Because, you know, the, the card declines more often at small stores than it does at the big ones. You know, it forces people by proxy to stay out of the mic. We, we will have no microeconomic basis. Like at the moment, we've got the economy, then we've got the welfare economy, which is supporting as a stabiliser, so social security economy. And then we have these micro economies like Facebook, like um, so all the small micro micro transactions that occur every day, cash based. And we're losing that cash based micro economy right now. And that is actually then, supporting communities and supporting families. It's like if I can sell my shoes and, and buy somebody else's handbag, I don't have to go to a store and get it. You know, and it's in that my, the small businesses, small um, Karen's business, other people's businesses that have been yep. had to, you know, had to rely on on crap, you know, and it's and paying twice as much for half as good stuff. You know, we should not be people on payments should not be the ones supporting the economy. And, um, you know, but we do. We are an economic stabiliser and, you know, our spending is other people's income and profits and wages. And until Australia gets that, we're going to have this struggle. You know, our spending is, you know, what happens to us happens to them because if we can't spend, they can't, they can't earn, you know? So it's, it's a simple, simple transaction. But yeah, look, I'm going to head off because I have things to do. So the vote tomorrow, good luck. And, um, yeah, yeah well, they, nine digitized, they want a digitised economy, absolutely, Jane. Right. Tomorrow morning, uh, Parliament resumes at 9am. Yeah. So I'll have to set the alarm because I'm not very good at going to sleep early. <laughs> and 9am, sometimes I might not be awake at 9am if I don't go to sleep until 4, do you know what I mean? So I'll have to set the alarm for to Can make I sure I'm awake say something before I go? I just This is a message to all the survivors out there, okay, who are like me. Um, I want you to know that you do not cause abuse, whether you're fighting the card or not. You do not, okay? The only people responsible for abusing children and raping women and men, the only people responsible for bashing women and men are the abusers. They're the only ones responsible, all right? And they're the only ones, it is a crime Okay, so better policing, not more victim blaming. Okay, but you are not responsible. None of us are. We didn't cause it. And those offenders that are causing it, you know, they're legally responsible. It's not up to us. So everything the NLP said tonight about that is shit. It's a lie. Okay, and if the only way somebody can stop being abused is by waving their plastic injury card at somebody, then I think that the answer to the Liberals, you know, is quite clear. They're just deluded. They, they're absolutely mm -hmm. deluded. And they're projecting. Yep. They're projecting their own behaviours. You know, I don't know about you, Kath, but you and I have never had sex in the sex in, in the prayer room, have we? No. Have we? Yeah, we've no. never done it on a desk of a, of a female minister or a male minister? Yeah, no. I didn't think so. No. You know, um, but yeah, look, America's paying the price for selling off their system to the private corporations now, and people are working three and four you know, jobs just to make rent. So, um, you know, by tying their health care to employment as well, they've screwed up. And their whole, you know, yeah. you've seen the tent cities over there. We don't want to be America. We don't want to be South Africa. But I just really just wanted to say that last bit is that you are not responsible, okay? The only person that is responsible for an act of abuse is the abuser. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm off. Mwah. Okay. Night night, everybody. See you tomorrow. See ya. Okay. Thanks, Catherine. That's all right. See ya. Oh, I just had to get it off my chest. I was so, I was seething. And I, I went, I had to go, um, <laughs> I had to go and get some gastro stop because I knew it had triggered me when I started getting upset. Because I, mean, I internalised first, I go all quiet. 
And then I started feeling, I was like, oh God, so I've gone and got something from my tummy. But while I was out, it was processing and I was getting angrier and angrier and angrier. I could not watch one more speech with that language in it. Not one more. All right. And to think, to use that excuse to then put people on the card who were victims of abuse. <sighs> oh, no, not good enough. Uh, just send it to our inbox, Shani. Okay, just message it to inbox or, or my message box, one or the other, but send it to inbox here um, and we'll get them and we'll save them all. And um, yeah, let's get this going. We'll do a 24 hour protest type thing. Everybody send your photos in. Like Amanda said, I'm not a pedo. I'm not a drunk. I'm not a druggie. All right. I'm Australian. You know what I mean? I'm a mum or dad or a nana even. Do you know what I mean? Or a student or whatever. And just put your payment type. Do you know what I mean? Because the card affected all payments. <sighs> so, yeah, oh, far out. All right, people, well, I'm out. Um, I'm going to go and catch up with my TV programs now and, and do normal things for a couple of hours. And, uh, you know, I'll set my camera up in the morning to screen the, the bill going through. No doubt there'll be more kicking and screaming or the Senate is going to be shit fight, but it doesn't matter because we still have numbers in the Senate as well. Um, yeah, so no night people will um, we'll write this through and um, yeah, and we'll talk about the Canberra trip and everything tomorrow. All right, see you guys.